Okay. So it's going to look slightly different because we are going to have more than one variable here. So for example, here's what we're looking at. 3y plus 4 uh, x equals 9. We're looking at something like this. So they're going to ask us to solve the equation, but they have to tell us which variable they want us to solve for. And now we have more than one. So it's very important that we pay attention to which letter we're solving for. Because we can solve for y and we can solve for x. Today, in this one, we're going to solve for y. So pay attention to that in the homework, on the test, all of that. You got to know which variable we're solving for. Because whichever variable we're solving for, that's the one we need to get by itself. So here we want the y by itself, which means we need to get everything else to the other side. We do it just like we did other equations, right? Just as if this was 3y plus 10 equals 9, right? We know what to do here. We're going to do the same exact thing with it. So raise your hand and tell me, what do you think we're going to do right now as our first step as we try to get y by itself? Then what are we think? Yeah, it's exactly what we're going to do. That 4x does not have a y in it, so we got to get rid of it. So we're going to subtract 4x on both sides. That's going to leave us with a 3y on the left. And on the right, can I combine 9 minus 4x? Does that give me 5x? No. You can't combine something with a variable to something without. So we're just going to leave it as 9 minus 4x. It just stays that way. We can't combine it. Now, if they both had x's, absolutely combine it. But they don't. We're almost there. We almost have y by itself. What's our last step? Cooper? Yeah, divide by three. We got times three, we're going to divide by three. So now I've got that y by itself on the left side. The right side, I'm just going to leave as that big fraction. I'm going to leave it just like that. So we're following the same process that we have all chapter. But in some aspects, this is even easier because we don't even have to simplify. We don't have to worry about getting negative 7 plus 12 wrong, right? Or dividing wrong or anything like that. We're just moving stuff around. And as long as you're showing the work and moving stuff around in the right order, we're going to get right in. Okay? This is as far as we can go. Chapter three, we'll talk about how to simplify this a little bit more. But for this chapter, this is completely fine. This is great. As what the book's going to show, what the test is going to have. Okay, just like that. Doesn't seem too bad, right? Okay, let's do another one. Let me have you do one on your own here. Same sort of thing. So uh, we'll solve for y again. Solve for y again. Go ahead and solve for y on this page. Do you have anything else you have to try? Y by itself here, moving everything else to the other side. Let's do that. Check somebody, see if they ended up the same thing here. I got 20 minus 8 <laughs> over 40. Yes. Oh. All right, raise your hand. Tell me what's the first thing that we're going to do here. Bishop, what are we going to do? Good. Yep. There you go. So that gives me 20 minus 8x on the left with a negative 4y. Can't forget about that negative there. Negative 4y on the right. 
And then what we're going to do is divide both sides by negative four. There you go. Divide both sides by negative four. We have y is equal to 20 minus 8x over negative four. That's it. Like I said, there are ways we can simplify that a little bit more, but for now, that's good. We're going to leave it like that. I had ax minus 40 um, divided by negative 4. Would that be wrong? That would be wrong. Yeah, because you can't subtract in the opposite order. So make sure you're writing it down, right? Showing that work, and we know that that negative belongs to the 80. Okay. Okay. Do you have questions on that? All right. All right, let's see. Does A equal one or two? Which letter? We don't know what A equal. Oh, C. Well, which letter do you want to solve for? A, B, C, or D? C. 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 C
So if you're not in band or work, so you wouldn't know. I was the last year. Then you probably should know. Uh, <laughs> but that's going to help you. It's going to make you stronger oh, oh, yeah, player, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you, when it comes time to perform, you're back. Anyway, all right, who are we Let's do it. That was last year. You can't be bothered by stuff that was last year. All right, it's so real. <laughs> I'm going to give you a problem that seems, seems basic, but there's a reason behind it. Okay? Let's go uh, 8x plus 5x equals y. And I want to solve for x. Okay, this should be pretty easy for you. Go ahead and solve that out. Get x by itself. You guys know how to combine like terms. I've done it. Double check somebody, make sure you have to I got I got X. I got we can mine like terms, right? We can combine like terms if they have the same variable. What is 8x plus 5x? 13x. 13x, right? 13x equals y. I got to get x by itself. I have times 13, I divide by 13. He's kidding, right? There you go. So now I'm going to take this one step further. All right, I told you this was there's a reason why I did this. The next thing that we're going to look at is I'm going to do this 8x plus 5xy equals z. Slightly different, okay? Slightly different. We're still going to solve for x. So let's take a look at what we have to do here, okay? And this is important. This is the toughest part of this lesson, okay, today. So we need to take these two terms. We still need to combine them because we need to get one x in our problem, not two. So we need to combine them into one. To do that, we're going to combine our like terms. So like we did over here, we did 8 plus 5 is 13 times x, right? We combine. We can't do that here because you've got that extra y, okay? So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to think of this like uh, distributive property backwards, okay? Let me show you what I mean. Distributive property, we know. We take that three, we multiply it in, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm going backwards on distributive property, I'm gonna take something out of both of them. I'm gonna take something out of both. And what I'm gonna take out of both of those terms is what I'm trying to solve for. So I'm gonna take that X away from both of those. And then in the parentheses, I'm gonna write whatever's left after I took that X away. So what's left, I got an eight left here, and I got five Y left here. So I take that X out of both of those terms, whatever's left over, I put in the parentheses. I cannot combine the eight plus five Y, that's not 13 Y, I can't do that, right? Because one has a variable, one doesn't. So I've got one X now, that's what I wanted, was one X. I did that by pulling that out and writing what was left over. Wait. We'll look at it. We'll look at more examples. Let me finish this one. Let's have it in our notes. The more you see it, you'll get used to it. Okay. So let's finish this one and then we'll move on to another one and then you can ask questions. So I've got X by itself. Now I pulled it away. I wrote whatever was whatever was left over. So now I've got X times this whole thing. To get rid of X times this whole thing, I need to divide by this whole thing. I'm going to divide by 8 plus 5y. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do the other. So I'm getting rid of that multiplication by dividing both sides by it. That's going to cancel out my parentheses on the left side. 
So now all I have is X. And on the right side, I have Z over 8 plus 5Y. That would be my answer. Right? So I combine those like terms by taking that X out in front, whatever was left over, and then I could divide them. Okay, we're going to look at it one more time, and then you can ask some questions about it. Make sure that we know what we're doing. Okay. Let's go. We'll do this. And again, we're going to solve for X here. So we want to combine those two X's into one. Okay, tell the person next to you, what do you think we're going to see on that left side? Just what do you think? Even if you're unsure, what do you think we're going to see on that left side? X parentheses are all So it's going to be X. Okay, so before you keep going, let's just make sure we got the right thing on the left side. What are we going to have over here? What are we going to have? Cooper? X and then in parentheses Y plus 4. There you go. So I took that X out of both of them. And what was left over was that y plus four. Okay, now what do I have to do to get that x by itself? I then divide by y plus four in parentheses. Yeah. Divide by y plus four. If you want to put it in parentheses, you can. I know I did over there. You don't have to if it's just the bottom. Okay. So I got x equals 12 over y plus four. That's it. Not bad. Once you know what you're doing. Okay. Any questions so far? Explain the person next to you. How did we get from here to here? What did we do? Who's olives? So it's negative zero lives on. Oh, I always thought it was olives. That's why they highlighted the lips in red. Oh. oh. Come on, it was the last couple of years. I thought it was olives. They didn't like the bag that I told them that negative zero wasn't a thing. All right. All right, so here's, here's the last thing we're going to look at. Okay. We're going to take that and just add one extra little step to it. Okay. Uh, let's go. Making it up. So let's go 4xy minus 3x plus 4z equals 30. Yeah, good question. You got to know what we're solving for, right? We are going to solve for x here. So work with somebody. I want you to see if you can figure it out. Hey, remember, first thing you got to do is anything that doesn't have that variable we're trying to call for, you got to move that to the other side. Oh, it's right. We're not combining like terms yet. Anything that doesn't have an X, get rid of it first. Then you can start combining like terms. That's that extra step I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. 
All right, hey, we we got some something different here, right? This is a little new. We cannot right away. We cannot do our parentheses here. I saw people trying to do parentheses with all three terms here. We can't do all three terms because not all three terms have x in it, right? So raise your hand, tell me what should we do first here? Yeah, Google, what should we do first? We should subtract four z from both sides. Yeah, if it doesn't have an x, move it to the other side right away. So we got to get rid of that four z first. We're going to subtract four z from both sides. So now I have 4xy minus 3x equals 30 minus 4z. All right, that's a z. I do the line so it doesn't look like a 2. Okay, so I move that 4z over. Now I can combine. Now I can do the parentheses. And the parentheses are going to end up being x parentheses 4y minus 3. And then, like we did in the other ones, divide by that 4y minus 3. So it's going to be x equals that. Is there going to be a problem with this in over? Yeah. Oh, so if anything, you have to move it to the other side, then you move Yeah, anything that doesn't have that variable, you have to move that to the other side. And then you can do the front. Then we can do the front. Hey, listen real quick. Last thing. Last thing here, just a little pointer to help you on the homework. If you have to type in a giant fraction thing like this, okay, there's a little button, you know, where it brings up all those little different things you can click on. One looks like this. That click on that first. That's going to open up a fraction for you and your answer, and you can type on top, like on the bottom. Okay, just be on the lookout for that button. Go ahead, try it out. We'll finish it up tomorrow. We'll go over any questions that you have.